Hi, this is Chip Jet. Uh, I'm playing 816 Horse here on Full Tilt Poker. Uh, we're going to pick it up uh, starting with Raz. Some of the best Raz players uh, that I've noticed, because I, I really do like the game, is uh, are, are like O'Neill Longston. He's you know he's consistently making final tables at the World Series in, in Raz. Uh, Mike Wattell, who's who actually is one of the people that I, I grew up playing with in, in Arizona, and uh, you know and we we just in in our mixed game we played so much Raz that you know I know that's why he's so good at it. Um, you know, and, and now with the internet, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be a lot better. But uh, even, even five years ago, there weren't that many people that, you know, even knew, knew how to play it, let alone would, you know, were any good at it. But in in that last hand, uh, let's see here. In that last hand, I started with a with a real good starting hand, uh, two three five. Uh, I raised. I got called by a seven. Uh, they caught an ace on fourth, and I caught a king. But you know, because I only, you know, we only put in one bet on third street. I just, I didn't feel like I, I needed to try to try to catch up. So, just, just let it go. And the sand he uh I brought in with the queen, everyone folded to the to the jack, uh which means basically that someone someone made a mistake the whoever was you know uh second to last to act, I think they had like a seven up they they definitely should have raised it there and and they would have taken it down but uh you know sometimes what happens is someone will look at their at their at their starting cards and see that they're bad uh and click the 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 fold button. And then it gets folded around to them, and they they don't realize that that was a spot where they should have just went ahead and picked up the, picked it up. Um, here I've got a six eight. Uh, we have one limper in there. I'm gonna go ahead and limp too, and uh, see see what happens. Uh, the bring in was a ten, and he caught a six. Uh, so and by him not betting there, it's very clear that he has a big card in the hole, uh, and I've got the other guy beat who has a queen. Uh, he check raised me, so now it's not so clear. But we'll see how this goes here. I got a good card here. Uh, this the, the ten seven six is definitely representing that they made a that they made a ten here. Uh, I, I'm drawing at an eight. I made a nine. Um, the way he raised me there, there's a good chance that his the ace paired him here. Uh, this this bet should get the queen jack five deuce out, but it doesn't. Um, there's a pretty good chance I have the best hand here, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just call. And I caught a brick on the river, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check here with the best hand. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, his, he paired a seven. So, oop. No, he didn't. Uh, he made an eight. I'm supposed to raise here, and I wouldn't have. You know, it's not always a, the best idea to do it into an eight there. You know, I mean, when the high card's an eight, you know, I don't have to try to steal it there. But usually the high card's going to be a jack or a queen, and you always want to try to pick that up. And uh, just as I, I was mentioned that some people do that, and they shouldn't, I, I did it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm high card with a seven here. Um, you know, it it... it doesn't really change change you know whether you are going to play the hand or not you know I mean I I have a very good starting hand it just means that you know the chances are that that you know it's going to be harder to make a good low and so now that he's one full card ahead of me here I'm just going to let it go you know so sometimes if all, if it's all high cards out then when you catch one high card you know you you feel like like the low cards are going to be coming but you know in that situation where he catches a uh, where he catches a you know, a perfect card for his hand, and I catch, uh, you know, a complete blank, you know, a king, you know, and so many of the low cards are already out, you know, it's going to be hard for me to catch up in that spot, so. Now we're playing uh, stud high.
looks like I might get to see 4th Street here, but we have nothing, so... Wish we were playing Raz one more hand. <laughs> um, this last hand I had three, four, five with the four, five of hearts in the hole. Uh, I was the bring in. Uh, it got raised uh, by a king, or limped by a king, and then raised by an ace. Uh, I uh, I just chose not to not to get involved. I wasn't sure what what the uh, king was going to do. I, I definitely didn't want to get in stuck in between a uh, you know a pair of aces and a pair of kings. You know, in, in some kind of a, a raising war. Uh, here I was the low card with the six. Uh, they they let me see uh, fourth street, and I actually paired my paired my ace. So. That was like a free pot where if, if they had raised there, I, I definitely would have gotten out. So it's ni nice to pick up some free money. All right. Uh, here in Stadilo, I have four, six, eight rainbow. Uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of action happens before they get around to me. But uh, this, this hand, for instance, is a lot stronger than a hand like, like eight, six, three rainbow because, you know, the four and the eight uh, can meet for the straight. So, you know, once, once you, you know, you make your low. It, it really helps to have a hand like this when you're, you know, trying to make a high, you know, because the the straight connects. Uh, here I pick up a, a ace, which is great for my low. And he catches a ten. He'll probably let me have this. I would guess. He didn't. But now I've made my low. I made an eight, and and I have a gut shot straight draw, along with you know the back door just picking up a pair of aces and that kind of stuff. It's gonna, you know, he'd have to have, you know. An incredible whole cards in that situation for, to call. I mean, uh, it's very clear in that, and you know, in that spot that I either paired my ace like, or or made my low. So when when your head's up against someone, and uh, they catch an ace and you catch a bad card, it's you know, it's almost always the right situation just to get out because you know, that ace helps in so many ways, being the best high card and the best low card. All right, here's a situation on stud high low. Uh, the three brings it in. I've got split queens. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people playing this hand, and I mean, I'm 100% of the time in early position like this. You know, especially with an with an ace behind me, and you know everything else. Uh, you know, I just I don't play the play the split big pairs in, in you know in early position under any circumstances. So, except for aces, I don't play the split. Uh, like face face pairs and stud high low, uh, especially in in early position, just because you're gonna so many times you're gonna be against uh, random hands that involve an ace, and then later on in the hand if they catch an ace, you're basically forced to fold and and just uh, uh, ab abandon those the money you, you put in there you know earlier in the hand, and it just it happens so often, and especially if there's an ace up behind you, uh, I mean. Then, if you go ahead and raise it in that spot and you get re-raised, you don't know whether they have, you know, three low cards with an ace or the pair of aces, and you know, it just puts you in a very bad predicament where you know, it's better just to avoid it. All right, here's a hand I've got: split deuces with a with an eight of diamonds down. I'm the low card. Um, one of my eights is out. We'll see if anybody does anything here. Uh, the three go, three completed. I, I'm, you know, I'm probably gonna call here. Uh, it sounds like a small thing, but just having the two suited cards, two suited low cards in the hole, uh, it does make a difference. You know, now if I can catch a low diamond, uh, that would be good. Here I made two pair. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bet. Hope. If this, if the person with three four raises, that's that's usually a good thing. It'll force out the the other the other hand. Um, that's a bad card he caught up there. See, now I'm in a situation where I where he might be free rolling on me. Um, you know, this is this is a situation that you try to avoid. But you know, it, it, now I'm just hope I'm hoping my two pair holds up. But yeah, this was a situation where where he was free rolling on me, not me free rolling on him. So you know, that was a. 
an unfortunate situation, you know. In in stud high low, when you when when uh, someone looks like they're going low and they catch an ace, it's just it's it's a lot of trouble. I mean, you know, it, it's it. It helps. It can help their hand in so many different ways. You know, it it never it never hurts them, obviously, but usually it's you know it's like a a, a lot of trouble. Uh, this hand we've got two three six with two hearts. It's a good starting hand in stud high low. Uh, once again, you got all you know all three of your cards are connected. We only need need two two cards to make a, a low straight. So we'll be playing this one. We're expecting the ace to raise here, but they don't, so we'll go ahead and raise. Here's another uh, hand that is border bordering on playable here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to limp with it and take a look. Ace raise, which is kind of expected. And on Fourth Street here, we basically either need to catch. A low card, that's like the worst card possible. So this, because the ace caught good, this hand is now just done. Uh, what, what I was looking for for there on fourth street was was obviously a five, which would give me trips, or a low spade. Uh, you know, I, I had two low spades in the hole, which you know that would have been very you know uh, disguised if I you know catch the seven of spades there or something. Then you know then my hand you know has has a lot of potential. Uh, but obviously, you know, with the with the with the third street razor having an ace and catching a five, uh, you know, his hand definitely got better. And by I me mean catching a king, just you know, it basically eliminates. You know, I'd have to catch three perfect cards to make a low. So it's just you know, better just to give it up there. Uh, the game is hold them now. I'm posting behind the behind the button for a big blind. Actually, big and small. Small's dead. I have three nine suited. <laughs> it's three bets to me, so I'm gonna let that one go. Um, I mean, this this guy over here, the king king seven seven. I mean, uh, I would expect him to have have a an overpair here. Um, this guy just check raised, but now the queen comes. So I'm not I'm not sure what. Wow, they they actually had the hands I th I thought the other one had. I you know the guy that had the kings I thought had ace queen, and the guy that had the Ace Queen, I thought had kings, so you know, he uh, he three bet before the flop with Ace Queen off. So you know, that's that's one of the things I would, if I was at home, I would definitely make a note of. You know, that's you know, that's a little that's loose enough that I would I would take note of of, of that. Um, in, in this in this uh, case, King Seven Seven. Uh, uh, Made it three bets in in limit hold'em before the flop with with ace queen offsuit. So uh, for me, I would just put in something like uh, like uh, like three bets weak. Uh, oops. Oh, three bets weak, and uh, you know just leave it at that. Uh, I picked up two jacks. I'm uh, in early position. I'm gonna go ahead and raise it. You know that that way, if I'm ever in this in the game with this person again, you know, and I, I'm just sitting down, and I notice that they're, you know, you know, I, you know, some people you'll see when they when they three bet a hand like that, they always have aces or kings or queens, and uh, you know, I know in this case it doesn't he doesn't have to have to be that that strong to do that, you know, usually any anything that it really sticks out in my mind is either a really bad play or a tricky play or whatever. I'll just make a little note of it, you know, and it do, it doesn't have to be anything real in depth or anything just just you know just cuz I'll I'll never remember his name and somewhere down the road it, it it might help me just to know that he's you know he's a tad on the loose side pot with the two jacks I just raised and and picked up the blinds which in in my opinion is a, the best way for that hand to go with two jacks uh, you know they're very vulnerable in limit holdem so I was happy to pick up the blinds also also with the notes like in the uh you know in the like stud high low game or the Raz game, you know, if you see someone that's entering a pot with with a nine or a ten, you know, or or just doing anything out of the out of the ordinary, it's good just to make a note of that, you know, just just so you can keep track of of plays that are odd, you know. I mean, it's you know, if you have someone that will that is, you know, 
opening pots with a 10 in Raz, you know, it's good to know that that's that they're capable of doing that. Um, in this hand, I had Queen Jack offsuit in the in the uh, small blind. Uh, the guy in the cutoff seat raised, and I probably would have just called his raise, um, but the button went ahead and called also. And you know, I, I Queen Jack is not a hand I really like to be out of position with for the for the hand, so I thought it was best just to let it go. Looks like I would have been in some trouble here. Yep. I would have lost a big pot if I had played that one. Uh, jack five on the button. Some people raise uh, religiously on the button, uh, regardless of their cards. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, the hand where I fold the, folded the queen jack a couple hands ago, the, the uh, original razor had ace jack, and we, we flopped a jack. So even if the even if the six nine of diamonds hadn't come along, I was I was going to lose a I was going to lose a big uh, a big pot there, regardless. So, oops. For me. I, I, you know, I, I really try to avoid playing hands that I, I mean, I think are basically unplayable hands. Um, I, you know, in, in the cutoff or on the button, you know, I'll go ahead and raise with, with you know, any, I, I don't know, uh, quote unquote, uh, good starting hands. I mean, all the way down to maybe King 10 or, or King Jack, um, you know, uh, eight, I, I, if I'm on the button with a hand like Ace-8 or Ace-9, I'll raise, but I mean, I really, I'm, I'm not one of, the, one of the people that will just automatically raise with an Ace on the button. I mean, it just seems to me like I'll, when, when I do that, I either end up losing uh, a big pot or, or winning a very small pot, you know, and that, that just has never, has never uh, seemed to be worthwhile for me. Um, you know, also by, by you know, especially, uh, you know, if you, if you just, Make it make it known that you're willing to fold on the button, uh, you know your mediocre hands. Then then when you do raise on the button, you you get a little bit more credibility and you're able to pick up pots later. You know, if you just always raise on the button, then you're going to get played at played back at a lot, which you know isn't isn't always what you're looking for when you you know if you're raising with hands like queen five and and you know jack six and that kind of stuff. You know, uh, once somebody knows that you're raising, regardless, then it doesn't take much of a much of a hand for them to come back over the top of you and you know and then when when they're first to act on the flop you know a lot of the times if you're you know if you have someone that's always raising on the button you know and, and they re-raise you that now they're just going to fire out on the flop and, and it's really hard to, to do anything with that if you've missed so you know I uh, I usually only play hands that I'm that I really you know want to want to play the hand you know I mean the, where the cards really dictate me playing it uh, we switched to Omaha high low here again and uh, once again we're looking for uh, we're definitely looking for aces in this game, or I mean, even even one ace. But I mean, it's a uh, you know uh, a, a good rule in Omaha is just to never even think about playing a hand uh, that doesn't have an ace in it. Um, you know, usually you you want to have have other low cards to go with it. Uh, you know, obviously hands like ace ace deuce three that that kind of stuff is 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 the holy grail of Omaha. But in, in Omaha. Uh, Hilo, you know, some people will will play uh, four big cards. Uh, sometimes, if I, I mean, if I'm on the button, I'll think about trying to, you know, steal with four big big cards. the The, the problem is, is that is that uh, you know, if you don't have an ace in your hand, uh, especially, you know, I mean, a hand like like ten jack queen king uh, in Omaha high low. Um, if someone is does have an ace in, it, in their hand, they're they're basically playing five cards against your four card because ace is the best high card and the best low card. Um, also, uh, you know, hands hands like you know, like I said, like like nine ten jack queen. If you do make the nuts with it, a lot of the time it's going to be you know, with your ten jack, and then and then there's going to be low cards out there. So you're really looking at getting half the pot anyway. Uh, and you you know, with hands like that, you can never you can never make a low. So you know. People that that are playing against you that have opportunity to make high and low, uh, you know, are gonna are going to chop with you a lot and and they're gonna beat you a lot too. I mean, you, you really want hands that, that can go both ways, and uh, 
and obviously if you're starting with with all high cards you 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 can't go low so if if a flop comes low you just have to instantly you know let it go